Hi everyone. Welcome to amazing channel of Brilliant Katha. When you are rubbing one body with another body, electrons are transferred from two, from one object to what? Another object. Okay, this process, this type of electricity is been given a name. Halogen connected carbon sp3, then it's connected to benzene. See all of you, halogen connected. What is this carbon hybridization? Full single bond sp3, see then a benzene ring. Denominator poles shouldn't be included in the, the denominator poles. That means the denominator, these minus 1 and minus 5 should never be included, should never be included in the solution. Homo circle caudal fin. It's giving two equal lobes. But in case of cartilage fish, just look at here. One big lobe is there, one small lobe is there. You cannot cut into two equal half this fin. Hi all, today we are going to start with some important discussions from evolution as well as microbes in human welfare chapter. So some important topics from these chapters we will be discussing in the current life. So let me start with some important areas and MCQs from evolution topic. First question, abiogenesis theory of origin support. Theory of abiogenesis, that was the theory stating about origin of life in the planet. And regarding theory of abiogenesis, they were actually stating about origin of life from dead and decaying matters like mud, straw, etc. That is what is explained in theory of abiogenesis. Even some Greek philosophers were also supporting theory of abiogenesis. And it means spontaneous generation. Theory of abiogenesis is also called as theory of spontaneous generation or theory of autogenesis. Hope you got it. Now let me check what is the remaining option and the answers of that also. Origin of life from blue-green algae. That is a wrong statement. It is not regarding the abiogenesis. That is actually stating about organic evolution. Then origin of life is due to pre-existing organism. Actually this theory was proposed by two scientists Harvey and Huxley. That is not given in NCRT. Understand life came from pre-existing life, omnicellulae, e-cellulae. That was explained in origin of life from pre-existing organism, that is theory of biogenesis. It was experimentally proven by a scientist named Louis Pasteur through Swan neck flask experiment. We will come to that Swan neck flask experiment topics also. Then organic evolution is due to chemical reaction. So origin of life from chemical substance, through inorganic evolution or chemogeny or chemical evolution that was explained by Oparin and Haldane. So remember there are many theories regarding origin of life. There was theory of special creation by Father Saurus. In that he was telling life came, life was like that itself from the beginning of the planet or the diversity in the planet remained the same from the present up to now or all the organism that you see today, they all were like that itself from the beginning. And Earth is only 4000 years old. Like that many connotations were said by Father Saurus. Anyway, all these connotations were rejected. Then came the theory of panspermia. That means the life came from outer space in the form of small small spores that was falling into our planet and from that only the first life was coming. Anyway that was also not accepted. Both these theories got rejected. The theory of special creation by Father Saurus and theory of panspermia also because there is no evidence. Then only came the theory of abiogenesis. Life came from dead and decaying matters. Even so many Greek philosophers were supporting this. So answer to this question is spontaneous generation, theory of abiogenesis or autogenesis. Now let's see the next question. 
the sequence of origin of life may be so the question is regarding the chemogeny biogeny as well as the organic evolution which was explained by oparin and haldane two scientists one from russia oparin is from russia and haldane is from england they only explained about origin of life through chemical evolution so what they have explained is in our planet first there was only atoms that was surrounding the planet earth and these atoms were actually combining to form molecules so first formed was the inorganic molecules <coughs> from this inorganic molecules so atoms that were including like carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen argon helium like that so many atoms were surrounding the planet when the planet's temperature was decreasing after its formation you can see these atoms combined to form molecules in that first formed organic molecule was methane along with methane there was inorganic molecules like water vapor water vapor was also formed at that time and you can see the hydrogen was combining not only with the carbon it also combined with all the oxygen in order to form water vapor so from the beginning the planet was having a reducing atmosphere because complete oxygen was stuck inside the hydrogen then it also combined with the nitrogen hydrogen also combined with the nitrogen in order to form ammonia so water vapor ammonia methane all these were formed when the planet was formed for the first time and when the temperature kept on decreasing so in this decreasing temperature and this chemical evolution was taking place slowly again when the temperature was decreasing in the reducing atmosphere this water vapor started combining in order to form the rain they were forming water droplets and they were filling the surface of the earth's depressions forming the oceans and remaining evolution was taking place in the oceans so rain was actually formed in the decreasing temperature then you can see methane ammonia all these started reacting and from this inorganic molecules only microbio molecules started forming microbio molecules you may be knowing which are the microbio molecules like amino acids as well as sugars nucleotides so many small small bio molecules were formed again in the decreasing temperature in the reducing atmosphere in the oceans only this microbio molecule started forming the macrobio molecules in macrobio molecules you should understand amino acids will be combining to form proteins and the nucleic acid sorry nucleotides will be combining to form nucleic acids and the sugars will be combining to form polysaccharide like that big big molecules will be formed and in the remaining part of evolution they started combining to form some colloidal aggregates that colloidal aggregates only we call it as protobionts so protobionts are the colloidal aggregates of macrobio molecules which was formed in the ocean it's not considered as the first cell and all it's the uh, it was just an aggregate of all organic molecule later this all organic molecules they started forming the first life in the planet so first life that evolved in the planet was eobionts or protocells even you might have read about it in molecular basis chapter that means first life that was evolving it was having a cell like structure it's not proper cell and in that there is a nucleus like structure and the nucleic acid or the genetic material at the center was rna so in the first life that was evolving the genetic material was not dna the genetic material was rna and it was eobionts or protocells from this eobionts or protocells only slowly slowly the first cell was evolving 2 billion years ago that is the prokaryote that is the first life in the planet so first cellular form of life if it is asked in the exam the answer is prokaryotes a cellular form it is eobionts or protocell so prokaryotes were formed 2000 million years ago or 2 billion years ago and this is the first cellular form of life from the prokaryotes later you can see different types of organism evolved in this planet so from the monera from the bacteria only different type of organism was evolving in the course of evolution 
So Oparin and Haldane divided this concept of evolution into three. In that starting from atoms up to the first cell formation is called as chemical evolution or chemogeny. Then starting from eobions up to the prokaryotes formation that only we call it as biological evolution sorry protobionts up to the eobionts or prokaryotes that is biological evolution and from the first cell formation of different organism in this planet that is actually called organic evolution so this is the evolution that we are going to discuss in the current chapter and even the experiments associated with chemical evolution or chemogeny we would be discussing now coming to the question sequence of origin of life so here first option they are telling about organic material organic material was first not formed second option inorganic material is correct then it formed organic material eobiont and colloidal aggregate is wrong actually colloidal aggregate should come first after that only the eobiont colloidal aggregate what it means is protobionts third option inorganic material was actually forming organic material from the organic material only the colloidal aggregate were formed that is protobionts from that only the eobion was formed from the eobions you can see the cell was formed the prokaryotes were formed so first sorry third option is correct for this hope you got it if you got it please comment then we will proceed now coming to the next concept chemical evolution the experimental evidence was actually given by two scientists Harold C. Urey and Stanley L. Miller so they actually created an apparatus which will be resembling the previous earth's atmospheric condition so you look at this diagram here this chamber actually is resembling the previous earth's atmospheric condition it was storing a lot of gases that was actually present in the atmosphere when the earth was formed for the first time so same thing that i explained here these only were stored in that glass chamber so that glass chamber that i am circling here it is representing so this one what you can see it is representing the previous earth's atmospheric condition so which all gases were actually formed in the previous earth's atmospheric condition it is ammonia water vapor methane and hydrogen so hope you got this experiment in this chamber they all created the condition that was there in the earth like 800 degrees celsius temperature was maintained there is no oxygen so the atmosphere is highly reducing atmosphere so it's a reducing atmosphere with 800 degrees celsius and you can see instead of volcanic eruptions and all that was happening in our planet they substituted with some volcanic eruptions as well as when the rain was there there was actually some uh, thunder and all so here all these were actually replaced using some electric sparks that was done using some electrodes kept in the container so from this chamber you can see from the boiling water chamber the boiling water will be actually producing a lot of water vapor that is also coming to this chamber and in the decreasing temperature you can see in this chamber here a condenser is there through the condenser when it is passing the gases when passing through the condenser <coughs> you can see the temperature is decreasing and they wanted to check whether the things said by Oparin and Haldane is correct what Oparin and Haldane was telling in the decreasing temperature in the reducing atmosphere and during this volcanic eruption and when there is a lot of thunder and all these gases will be reacting to form the organic molecule so whether it is correct and from that well a cell evolved so here in the decreasing temperature water vapor condensed to form water droplets and this water droplets were formed in this u-tube shaped apparatus in this u-tube shaped apparatus water droplets were formed so that represent the ocean and in that they started getting some amino acid sugars etc so so many scientists were trying the same experiment they all were getting organic molecules but none of them were getting a cell so oparin and haldane's hypothesis or it was accepted only up to the chemical evolution they were getting protobionts also oparin when doing this experiment he started getting colloidal aggregate 
that is protobionts only artificially prepared protobionts we call it as coesser weeds now coming to next question so this is the diagram of a parin and Haldane's chemical evolution which was experimentally proved by Harold C. Urey and Stanley L. Miller through this apparatus. So in this apparatus remember this chamber will be indicating this chamber will be indicating previous earth's atmospheric condition which included the molecules like the ammonia, methane, water vapor and all. And in that inorganic molecules which I said one is organic methane first formed organic molecule is methane ammonia water vapor hydrogen etc were also formed and they were reacting in the decreasing temperature when they are passed through the condenser and here this chamber that is representing the water droplets that is coming here that is actually representing the ocean so first life evolved in ocean all through this chemogeny biogeny etc was said by Oparin and Haldane to check that only Yuri Miller conducted this experiment and they got evidence only up to chemogeny, chemical evolution. Next one, Louis Pasteur by careful experimentation demonstrated that the answer, life came from pre-existing life. This was the experimental evidence that was given by Louis Pasteur to the theory of biogenesis. So in NCRT they have in mention who was explaining about theory of biogenesis. It's actually Harvey and Huxley, two scientists. They said omnicellule, e-cellule, I think you might have heard about it, omnicellule, e-cellule. Cells are formed from pre-existing cell. Like that, one more statement was given by Harvey and Huxley, omnis vivum ex ovo or vivo. Omnis vivum ex ovo or vivo means the life came from pre-existing life. But they never explain from where the pre-existing life is coming. So one more point I am adding. Theory of biogenesis never stated anything regarding origin of life. Nothing was stated regarding origin of life in theory of biogenesis. They just disapproved the theory of abiogenesis and so many experimental evidence were also there by many scientists like Francisco Reddy, Lazaro Spallanzani, even Louis Pasteur. And the most crowned experiment is of Louis Pasteur's Swan Neck Flask experiment. So Swan Neck Flask experiment what he was doing is he was taking a flask. You can see the neck of the flask is like a swan. So this swan neck flask was taken and in the swan neck flask it was getting filled with sugar solution and yeast and it was boiled nicely. You know the dividing time of yeast cell is 90 minutes. So he kept it for so many days and in that yeast started multiplying. After that he was putting some he boiled the sugar solution nicely after keeping it in a uh, flame he was boiling the sugar solution and the yeast so yeast died according to theory of abiogenesis life should come from dead and decaying matter he waited for that he just wanted to see whether the life will be formed from dead and decaying yeast is the thing said by the theory of abiogenesis correct that was the checking but here no life was formed in this flask from the dead and decaying yeast so theory of uh, biogenesis disapproved theory of abiogenesis through the swan neck flask experiment later the flask neck was broken and kept in the atmosphere so what happened some bacteria or fungal spores started falling into that and here you can see so many microbes started multiplying on the dead and decaying yeast so they concluded life cannot be formed from dead and decaying matters life can only be formed from pre-existing life so theory of biogenesis disapproved theory of abiogenesis and they also stated life can be only formed from pre-existing life but remember they never said from where the pre-existing life is coming next one in the developmental history of mammalian heart it is observed that it passes through a two chambered fish like heart three chambered frog like heart and finally a four chambered stage to which hypothesis can this above cited statement be approximated it's the biogenetic law 
that was proposed by von Bayer. Sorry, biogenetic law that was actually proposed by Heckel. So, according to the biogenetic law, an organism will be passing through adult stage of ancestor during embryological development. So, I have given a diagram of embryological development of humans, cat, hope you can see. So, first stage of embryo, how it looks like, second stage of embryo, how it looks like, third stage of embryo, how it looks like is given in the diagram. So, during this embryological development, if you are observing, you can see their embryological development will be resembling with the embryological development of other organism given here like the rabbit, humans, cat, frog, etc. The first stage, second stage, third stage is given. So, those organisms which is having some resemblance during embryological development, they have a common ancestor. That was the concept of evidence from embryology. So, what is said in the biogenetic law is, it was completely disapproved by the Bayer's law. So, according to biogenetic law, an organism during embryonic development, they will pass through the adult stage of ancestor. That means, an organism may become the adult stage of ancestors like this. Like this only it will be formed. First, they will be resembling all the ancestors with which they have connection. Then only they will reach the final stage. This was the statement given in biogenetic law. Anyway, this was completely disapproved. It is not possible. We may not pass through the adult stage of ancestor. But... We have some resemblance with the development during embryo formation with the ancestor's embryo. That is actually said in the Bayer's law. This was more acceptable. So, there is the evidence from embryological development. So, remember biogenetic law, it was stating during the course of uh, development of embryo, an organism will be passing through adult stage of ancestor. That is not at all possible. Understand it was rejected. An organism will be actually showing resemblance with the embryo development of ancestor. So, that also only in the first stage coming to the later stages and all, it will look entirely different. Next one, which of the following is not the result of convergent evolution? You might have learned about analogous organs. Analogous organs actually show convergent evolution. Analogous organs means if two organisms have a structure which look entirely similar but origin is different. Functionally it is same. Functionally it is same but the origin development and all is different. One example I have given here. Thorns of Bougain Villa and tendrils of Cucurbita. Thorn is for protection as well as cucurbita if you can see the tendril is for climbing. Functionally different but origin is same. So the example that I have given here is of homologous. But here what they have asked is convergent evolution. Convergent evolution means it is analogous. Analogous case understand origin is different. Origin is different but you can see the function will be same such type of organs are called analogous coming to homologous you can see homologous organs will be having the same origin origin will be same functionally it can be same or different that is actually called homologous organ so here first option that we is given is four limbs of whales and bats Four limbs of whales and bat if you are taking, you can see it is having the internal structure, origin etc. is same. But function is different. So look at this diagram that is given in NCRT. The four limbs of whales. You can see the number of bonds or the set of bonds that is coming is same. Pattern of arrangement is same. Origin is same. But the function of both these or the four limbs of bat if you can observe the functionally they are entirely different functionally same also can be there so if two organism have an organs of same origin but functionally they can be same or different such organs are called homologous organ remember homologous organs will be showing common ancestry homologous organs may show common ancestry 
then remaining all options are examples of analogous organs flippers of penguin and dolphin origin is different but function is same potato and sweet potato origin is different you should understand potato is a underground stem modification it's a stem tube sweet potato is an underground root modification and both are examples of storage they are storage organs only so functionally it is same so it is analogous eye of octopus and mammals origin is different but function in both of them is vision so remaining all option understand they are examples of analogous organ also keep in mind there is a sure question from this area so learn all the example of homologous and analogous so whatever is given in 2 3 and 4 is example of analogous organ so when you are writing about analogous organ remember they are organs which are having different origin or development but functionally they are same but coming to homologous organs you can see the origin will be coming to homologous organ the origin will be same but function can be same or different such organs will show common ancestry analogous organs doesn't show common ancestry so this is the topic evidence from morphology and anatomy next is archaeopteryx why i have given this question is to show the connecting link evidence from connecting link in classification from evolution and all when you are taking the information we will sometimes get a doubt from which organism they are evolving for example if i tell about reptiles birds and mammals how you will place in the hierarchy or the branching or the pedigree of classification like that doubt may arise which evolved second which evolved first or is both of them coming from the common ancestor like that so sometimes like this a connecting organism will be there which will help you to understand the connection between a lower group and a higher group for example archaeopteryx is the connection that show birds evolved from reptiles so what is connecting link the explanation of connecting link the organism that is sharing the character of a higher group and a lower group and it show the higher group evolved from the lower group that is called as connecting link archaeopteryx is a fossil bird which shared the character of both birds as well as reptiles so the avian features if you are taking you can see in the diagram itself they are having wings and they are having the forelimbs modified into feathers and all and the hind limbs they are having the claws and all so all these are coming in the archaeopteryx then when the fossils were again cross-checked the scientists came to know they also shared the reptilian characters their bonds were not hollow like birds the bonds were not pneumatic bonds then second you also can see their beak is full of teeth like that so many things are actually coming in archaeopteryx lithographica that is a fossil bird so this organism is considered as the connection between birds and reptiles so like that many things are there so many connecting links are there which you should learn from other chapters coming to neat point of view and all so here i can tell virus is the connection between living and non-living archaeopteryx is the connection between birds and reptiles egg laying mammals is the connecting link between reptiles and mammals platypus or echidna these organisms are egg laying so they share the character of reptile remaining characters if you are taking they are the characters of the mammals so like that in evolution connecting links are also evidence to interpret evolution you know what is evolution learning the brief history of various life forms in this planet how they are evolving and all that is evolution so we interpreted this evolution using so many evidence evidence from biochemistry that is dna dna similarities and all or evidence from connecting link evidence from the homology and analogy like that next one industrial melanism is an example of industrial melanism is an example of natural selection so let's have a discussion about the natural selection industrial melanism so in 1850 a survey was conducted in england and in that they were actually checking 
they are putting a survey on the Biston betel area on moths. The number of moths about the melanized moths as well as the white colored, the light colored moths. A survey was conducted in England in 1850. So during the survey, it was conducted by a scientist named Bernard Kettlewell. So in 1850, it was a time before industrial revolution in England. No much industries were there. So what happened is they have seen in 1850, the dark colored moats, the melanized moats numbers were increasing. Whereas the white, sorry, the dark colored moats or melanized moats numbers were decreasing whereas the white colored moats numbers were increasing because they were sitting on the bark of the tree and all they can easily hide from the predators because tree trunks at that time was having a light background due to the growth of lichens whereas you can see the melanized moats were easily visible bark of the tree was actually having the light color on this this peppered moths when they were sitting it was visible to the predators so their numbers started decreasing the number of dark colored moths started decreasing whereas the white colored moths were increasing so the nature was selecting the best adaptable one in 1850 that was white now coming to 1920 the same survey was conducted after industrial revolution in England so when the industrial revolution was taking place so many industries were coming there in England the pollution was increasing the tree trunks were actually deposited with a lot of carbon suit and all it was getting black in color then you can see the number of dark colored moths started increasing whereas the number of white colored moths started decreasing so it got reversed so this is natural selection no characters are permanent or adaptable the one which is best for the nature according to the changing environment the nature keep on selecting the better adaptable one so that is the example of natural selection so ddt resistance as well as the antibiotic resistance in bacteria all these are the example of natural selection so you should also remember darwinism regarding natural selection so what are the features of darwinism so first what was said by charles robert darwin darwin said well, when he was conducting the survey darwin was telling about the natural selection only he said that in an island when there is an overpopulation when there is a struggle for existence variation plays an important role struggle means competition so when there is overpopulation there is scarcity of food and shelter of course there can be competition there can be fight between the organism it can be intraspecific interspecific or it can be environmental so in the environmental struggle only just now i have said not about the interspecific or intraspecific because the changing environment played an important role in this organism so here variation also plays an important role best adaptable variants will be selected by the nature they reproduce and form the next generation species that is natural selection so natures always select the better adaptable one and adaptiveness according to darwin or the uh, charles robert darwin is reproductive fitness so like that this variation accumulate to form the new species next one a population will not exist in hardy weinberg equilibrium if the population is large individuals mate selectively that is wrong you might have learned this concept hardy weinberg equilibrium is possible if the mating between the organism is random it's not taking place in a selectively mating population it is taking place in a randomly mating population so it can occur in a large population where there is no mutation there is no migration there is no genetic drift and there is no natural selection in such population you can see allele frequency will remain constant or the frequency of any allele dominant allele recessive allele the numbers if you are taking it will be constant if there is no uh, features like mutation migration recombination natural selection etc so this is the hardy weinberg equation in that p square will be representing the homozygous dominant individual for example if i take stem height in that capital t capital t individuals are represented by p square whereas capital t small t individuals are represented by 2pq and the small t small t individuals are represented by 
the q square so allele frequency of a population will remain same for all these characters the homozygous dominant heterozygous and homozygous recessive it will be constant if you are taking a population that is not much affected by mutation natural selection gene migration genetic drift etc now here an application of the hardy weinberg's equilibrium so here what would be the frequency of heterozygotes in a random mating population understand here dominant allele a is represented by 0.6 and the recessive allele so p is equal to p is the dominant allele that is equal to 0.6 q is the recessive allele that is small a which is equal to 0.4 so the question is asking about heterozygote we should use the equation so here p square equal how much p square will be representing homozygous dominant that will be 0 0.6 into 0 0.6 that is 0 0.36 0 0.6 the whole square whereas the heterozygotes are actually represented by 2pq so here you will be getting 2.6 multiplied by 0 0.4 you may be getting 0.48 so heterozygous individuals allele frequency is 0.48 then about small a small a if it is asked in the exam you have to use the equation q square so that only we discussed in this one homozygous dominant is represented by p square heterozygous will be represented by 2 pq and the homozygous recessive is represented by q square hope you got this much now coming to next question evolutionary process giving rise to new species adapted to new habitats and radiation for example so which is the answer to this so what they are telling here is about adaptive radiation you know what is adaptive radiation evolution of different types of species in a given geographical area starting from a common point literally radiating to different areas of the geography so what darwin has observed is about the finch birds in one of the island where he was visiting from a common ancestor <coughs> different type of finch birds were actually evolving all these were evolving from a common ancestor in that geographical location so in that geographical location starting from a common point when he was going to different radiation sorry different direction he started seeing different types of species are evolving at one space one species was evolving at another space another species was evolving so all these happen because of different habitat they need different adaptation to sustain there so this is called as adaptive radiation examples of adaptive radiation darwin's finches so in galapagos island itself we have seen from a common ancestor different type of finch birds are evolving in different geographical location in that island so darwin's finches in galapagos island is an example of adaptive radiation one adaptive radiation is an example of divergent evolution even the evolution of australian marsupial the pouched mammals evolution in australia from a common ancestor different types of pouched mammals were evolving in different locations in australia that is also an example of adaptive radiation so both one and two the answer is four so this is evolution of darwin's finches from a common ancestor you can see different type of finch birds were evolving in the island from a common ancestor there was insectivorous fruit eating seed eating different varieties so this is the evolution of australian marsupial just imagine this is australian continent in that australian continent from a common ancestor you can see different type of pouched mammals were evolving that is also an example of this evolution the divergent evolution then understand in australia in similar geographical location similar looking species were evolving from different ancestor so two adaptive radiation occurring at the same place is also called adaptive convergence it is convergent evolution now next one wings of a bat sorry wings of a bird and wings of an insect you can see bird and the insect different origin and the wings also is of different origin in birds the forelimbs are modified into the wings in case of the insects you can see from their thorax only the wings is originating so origin is different function is same it is an example of analogous structure that represent convergent evolution next one 
Variation in gene frequency within a population can occur by chance. For example, if the population size is very small and if it is actually affected by some calamities, so many individuals will be lost and all that genes also will be lost. So here, there is a change in allele frequency by a calamity or a natural calamity that is called as genetic drift. So answer to question number 13 is genetic drift. I have shown a diagram. Just imagine there is a beetle population. In that there is green color beetle as well as brown color beetle. Just imagine a person while walking, he has stamped on all the green color beetle. Now there is no more green color beetle in a population. There is only brown. Then there is a random change in allele frequency of a population where all the green is lost and only brown is left. They only will multiply and produce the next population. So like this, a accidental genetic drift example is given here. Hope you understood. So understand what is genetic drift. Sudden changes occurring in the allele frequency of a population is called as genetic drift. It can be due to some calamities, disasters, etc. Now next one. Which of the following had the smallest brain capacity, homo habilis? Human evolution, if you are taking, you should understand. First is the Dryopithecus. So just let me write about the human evolution. So when you are learning this flowchart, you should remember. First is Dryopithecus. That is actually the direct ancestor of apes. At that time only, the Ramapithecus was also living, which was more human-like. Ramapithecus was more human-like. Then, from the Dryopithecus, later evolved is the Australopithecus. Understand, Australopithecus is like both ape as well as humans. They were sharing the character of both apes and humans. So, Australopithecus, remember, it is actually a connecting link between. Australopithecus is the connecting link between humans and apes. So, Dryopithecus was more ape-like. Dryopithecus is more ape-like. Ramapithecus is little bit man-like. Australopithecus was ape-man. And the first evolved man-like was Homo habilis. First evolved man-like is Homo habilis. Now later evolved is Homo erectus. Remember this flowchart. And in this flowchart, the brain capacity keeps on increasing. Then the last evolved is Homo <coughs> sapiens. In Homo sapiens, three subspecies were there. In that two became extinct. First in that is Homo sapiens Neanderthalensis, that is Neanderthal man. Second evolved is the Cro-Magnon man, that is Homo sapiens fossilis. Then the last evolved is the modern humans, that is we, that is Homo sapiens sapiens, that is the modern man, the man of today. So in all these, when you are checking the brain capacity, you can see we will be starting from apes with a cranial capacity of around 400-500. Then coming to the Dryopithecus and all, you can see it is also 400-500, Australopithecus 600, Homo habilis coming to around 700-800, then Homo erectus 900, Homo sapiens 1300-2600, like that. Cranial capacity keep on increasing. Now next is presence of tail and course of hair in the human body is. This is an example of atavism or reversion. If we are getting a character that was lost in the ancestor and if we are getting a character that is not seen in us but in some other organism, we can tell we have a common ancestor. This is called atavism or reversion. Evidence from atavism or reversion. So if you want to connect an organism with another organism, just look at atavism or reversion. That means <coughs> on a sudden a tail is appearing in a baby. Understand this tail is not in us but it is there in some other organism. So understand we both have a common ancestor that is called as atavism or reversion. Now next one, the type of natural selection that operates to eliminate intermediate phenotype in a population if both the average individuals sorry if both the extremes are selected like this if i am drawing the graph if both the extremes are selected average one is not selected that is called disruptive selection 
So the type of natural selection that operate to eliminate intermediate or average one that is disruptive selection. Then if it is selecting only one extreme other extreme and the average is not selected that is called directional selection. Example of directional selection is industrial melanism, DDT resistance in the pest etc is an example of directional selection. And so here you can expect case study questions like there is some uh, <coughs> marine shellfishes, limpets. There is white colored limpets, black colored limpets, black and white limpets. Nature is selecting the black colored limpet, white colored limpet, but not the black and white. What is it? The answer is disruptive selection. So like that you should understand what they are asking clearly and you should select. So you can expect some case study questions from these areas. So that's all about questions from evolution. Now let's start some questions from microbes chapter. Which of the following microbe is made up of protein only? Prions. Proteinaceous infectious particles are actually called as prions. Like they cause mad cow disease. I think you have heard about bovine spongiform encephalopathy. That means in cattle, in the brain, bovine cattle, then spongiform, the brain will be becoming, encephalon means brain, it will be becoming sponge like due to the infection caused by this proteinaceous particle. So prions are proteinaceous infectious particle. I have given a picture of this prions. Hope you can see this diagram of prions. Then what I have given here is viroids. Viroids you can see they are having RNA as the genetic material. It is single standard circular RNA that can cause infection. One I will tell from biological classification that you have learned last year grade 11. Viroids are actually causing potato spindle tuber. It was discovered by T.O. Diner. Then this structure is of virus. So vir viroids if you are taking, it is smaller than virus. It's having only genetic material. Prions if you are taking, there is no genetic material. There is only a protein. But virus if you are taking, there is a genetic material which is enclosed by a protein called capsid. Now next one, identify the parts label here. The given diagram is of bacteriophage a virus that attack a bacterial cell is called as bacteriophage you might have seen this diagram in ncrt so here bacteriophage diagram if you are taking <coughs> it's having a head region a represent head region so a that is given here it represent head inside that only a double standard dna will be coming then b represent collar b represent collar then you can see there is C. The C will be representing the tail and D represent the plate. So like that it will be representing the diagram. So 3 is the answer. So what is the use of this tail plate, tail fibers, springs, pongs, etc. So they are actually the bacteria, sorry, they are actually the virus that will be attacking bacterial cell. Whenever they are attacking a bacterial cell, with the help of the springs and pongs only, they will be inserting the genetic material. For example, look at this diagram. You can see, with the help of the springs and pongs, they can attach to this bacterial cell. After attaching to the bacterial cell, they inject it into the bacterial cell. Now, they can go and join with the genome of bacteria and take control over the cell. So, two things can happen after infecting the bacterial cell. Either they remain silent in the bacterial cell. When the bacterial cell is multiplying, viral genome also will multiply. That is actually called as the... So, two stages are the lytic phase as well as... <coughs> so, that is the lytic phase. In that you can see they will be multiplying inside the bacterial cell. They take control over the cell and they burst the cell open. That is the lytic phase. Then second is lysogenic. Lysogenic phase you can see they remain silent. Whenever the bacteria is multiplying, viral genome also will multiply. And they remain silent in the bacterial cell. This phase of their life cycle is actually called lysogenic phase. Lytic phase if you are observing you can see inside that they will be taking control over the cell. And the virus will start multiplying in the cell. And slowly they will burst the cell open. That is actually called lytic phase. So this is the life cycle of the virus or the bacteriophage. Almost same only the virus life cycle will be. 
So what is the use of the prings, pongs in the tail plate and all? Where is the genetic material stored? All this you should understand. Head will be having the genetic material. Tail plate will be having the prings and pongs. Now next one. What is the beneficial role of lab in our stomach? Lab is lactobacillus. Bacillus means understand it's a root shaped bacteria. And here they only convert the milk into curd. You know the milk sugar. Milk sugar is lactose which is made up of galactose and glucose joined to each other by one four glycosidic bond. Don't tell it reverse that will be wrong. So it is not glucose galactose. It is galactose first carbon joining with the fourth carbon of glucose in order to form lactose. Here this lactobacillus when it is added in the milk first of all they will break the milk sugar lactose into galactose and glucose and later it will undergo the fermentation forming lactic acid this lactic acid can coagulate the milk protein casein in order to make the curd so this is how curd is formed so here the beneficial role is it checks the disease causing microbes in our stomach next one which of the following microbe is used for ripening of swiss cheese Swiss cheese ripening it is by a bacteria Propionibacterium shermani. So this is the Swiss cheese and I have also added the diagram of the Roquefort cheese. Roquefort cheese is actually having a different flavor because the organism used in the production of Roquefort cheese is Penicillium Roqueforti. So understand answer to the given question is Propionibacterium. So point I have to add here, Propioni bacterium shermani that is used in the production of Swiss cheese is a bacteria. Roquefort cheese with a different flavor, different aroma that is actually using the fungus Penicillium roqueforti. Next one, commercial extraction of penicillin was done by, you know penicillin was an accidental discovery by Alexander Fleming. So here, this person working in the lab, he actually forgets to discard the petri plates in which he was growing some bacteria. So after two days when he was returning, he saw some fungus growing on that petri dish in which the bacteria was actually getting killed. So this person concluded the fungus is releasing some chemical that can kill or retard the growth of bacteria. Later it was called as antibiotics. Anti means against. So antibiotics is life against life. Here you can see the chemical that is secreted by one microorganism is used to kill or retard the growth of another microbe. So penicillin was the first antibiotic discovered by Alexander Fleming. Later it was isolated by two scientists Ernest Chain and Howard Florey. So Chain and Florey only isolated it and it was also used to treat the wounded soldiers in World War II. So here is the Alexander Fleming, Ernest Chain and Howard Florey. <coughs> Next one. Match the following. So these are important areas. The production of different products that is used in our daily lives using some microorganism. First one, Aspergillus niger that is used in the production of Aspergillus niger is used in the production of acetic acid. Sorry. That is used in the production of citric acid. Then Clostridium butylicum that is used in the production of butyric acid. Acetobacter aceti is used in the production of acetic acid. Then Lactobacillus for producing lactic acid. So the answer 2, 1, 4, 3. Hope you got it. So different microorganisms then their production of different by products this is also a question area that you can expect in the current chapter next one the product of monascus purpureus which is the product that is produced by monascus purpureus i have already added the diagram statin is the product that is produced using the yeast monascus purpureus this is actually used in the treatment of blood cholesterol so it will be acting as a blood cholesterol lowering agent produced by monascus purpureus the next one you can see the diagram the clarification of bottled juice you can actually remove that turbidity and all by adding some enzyme which will be <coughs> digesting 
the cell walls in the juices and all so here we will be using clarification of bottled juices and all we can use pectinase so pectinase diagram is given here then the question dash are used in detergent formulation and helpful in removing oily stains so here removal of oily stains oils are made up of lipids only so for removing that we can use lipase so pectinase is actually used for removal of the uh, or uh, clarification of bottled juice the cell wall and all to digest that you can use pectinase then lipase is actually used to remove the oily stains and all so understand all these enzymes are produced in the bioreactor in a large scale by different industries pectinase lipase protease etc ligase you know it is a enzyme that is used for connecting that is in biotechnology protease already you know that is a protein digesting enzyme the next one select the microbe which is source of cloth buster so in order to remove the cloth that is occurring in the blood vessel we can use an enzyme that is streptokinase streptokinase is the enzyme which is acting as a cloth buster removing the blood cloth and all in the vessels arteries and all and it is produced by a bacteria in a large scale that is streptococcus streptococcus is a bacteria that is used for producing the cloth buster streptokinase next one immunosuppressive agent that is used in organ transplantation cyclosporin cyclosporin a is actually used in kidney transplantation and all because there is chance of organ rejection when you are taking organ from some other person there is chance of rejection of an organ if it is not that much matching because it's a foreign uh, particle so there is chance your wbc can attack it so you can use immunosuppressive drugs like cyclosporin a that is produced by a fungus trichoderma next one treatment of wastewater is done by so treatment of wastewater is done by secondary treatment you can use heterotrophic microbe that will be present in the sewage they will naturally consume it so this is the sewage treatment plant already you have learned first is the primary sewage where the water will be taken in a filtration tank for sedimentation and all and the supernatant will be taken to the next one so filtration tank is there where you will filter out the floating debris and all then you will be sending it to a sedimentation tank where you will make all the things to settle down then whatever organic material are present in the effluents will be sent into the aeration tank where you can see some microbes will digest it and eat it reducing the bod of water then it will be sent into a settling tank where they are allowed to settle down so flocks and all are formed they will be settling down they will be sent to a anaerobic sludge digester where you can see they will be eaten and some will be taken back into the tank as a primary inoculum like this only water is purified in the sewage treatment plant then only it will be taken to the uh, natural water body either it will be sent to natural water body or again it will be chlorinated disinfected and all and it can be used for various purpose then what are flocks masses of aerobic bacteria you can see in the diagram there is a mass of aerobic bacteria that is actually forming mesh like structure it is bacteria and fungal filaments growing on the organic waste particles that is coming in the sewage water in the aerobic tank then next one what is the composition of biogas so in the biogas plant you might have learned about the biogas plant here we will be putting the waste particle and here we can add the gober dung water etc through the inlet so what is happening is they will be having the cow dung will be having methanogens the methane producing bacteria they will digest this organic matter and they will release out methane along with methane which all gases are produced in here is carbon dioxide hydrogen then coming to next question biocontrol agent of the ladybird beetle and dragonflies are useful in ladybird beetle is actually to get rid of mosquitoes and the dragonflies we can use it to get sorry not mosquito aphids and dragonflies to get rid of mosquitoes so four is the answer <laughs> then what is bod that is the greater the BOD of wastewater, less is the polluting potential. BOD means you should understand it is the amount of oxygen consumed by bacteria when they are actually digesting or decomposing the organic materials that are present in the sewage water. 
so more the bod more is the pollution here you can see solar correct about bod biochemical oxygen on demand except the third option greater the bod of waste water greater is its polluting potential it's not less is the polluting potential remaining all options are actually correct so that's all about today's question discussion from evolution and microbes in human welfare hope you enjoyed the session and i try to go through all the topics in the chapters hope you got a good revision also okay then bye for today brilliant cutter Hi everyone. Welcome to amazing channel of Brilliant Katha. When you are rubbing one body with another body, electrons are transferred from two from one object to what? Another object. Okay. 